Hello, I'm Ray Woolnoff and I'm a textiles artist in the medium of felt and I love to teach how to make felted hats. I've put this video together to show you how to make your own styrofoam hat block, like this. And the reason that I've developed how to make these hat blocks is that if you're first starting into hat making, you really do need a good quality hat block. However, to go out and get yourself a traditional timber hat block is going to cost you several hundreds of dollars. Now don't get me wrong, a traditional timber hat block is a really excellent tool. They've been around for centuries, so uh, in millinery practices there's nothing really better. But they are expensive. So I decided to teach everyone how to make these little styrofoam hat blocks. They're not as durable, but they cost a whole lot less, approximately $50 Australian. The first thing you need to purchase are these, and these are cake decorating blanks purchased from a cake decorating stall and they normally cost about $3.50 each and you'll need three of those. Now you might be lucky enough to find yourself a styrofoam cylinder which you can use instead but a little bit more difficult to find. Now to stick these together you'll need some PVA glue and you'll need a tape measure. The tape measure is to measure your progress but to also record your head measurements before you begin the project and attached to this video is a downloadable PDF which will list all of these items and explain how to make the hat block and there will also be a chart for you to record your head measurements. The next thing you'll need is one of these. Protection. A dust mask. When you're carving and sanding and shaping styrofoam you'll be creating styrofoam dust and I don't think it's a good thing to breathe that in. At the very least, tie a handkerchief around your nose and mouth, but if you can get one of these or something better, it's a very, very sensible thing to do. Safety first. You'll need a knife, a straight edge knife, which we're going to use to carve and shape our hat block. You'll need inexpensive sandpaper or a sanding block to sand it. And then once we finish shaping and sanding our hat block, you need inexpensive, all-purpose wood filler. A container to mix the wood filler in with some water and last but not least something to apply your product, a brush and some acrylic varnish. Acrylic is better because it doesn't smell whereas your traditional spirit based varnish will actually dissolve styrofoam. So all of these products collectively should cost you approximately $45 to $50 Australian and as I said, you'll have leftover product to be able to use to make other hat blocks. The only thing you'll need to do is to repurchase your cake decorating blanks. The first thing you need to do is to stick your three cake decorating blanks together with a PVA glue. The styrofoam won't actually absorb the PVA glue, so it's best to apply this one day and allow the three blocks stuck together to dry overnight. Overnight our glue has dried and our three hat blanks are now stuck together to create this styrofoam cylinder which we're going to carve. I've gone and followed my instructions and on the blank provided I've recorded my various head measurements. The most important one is being this one which is around the cake block and my measurement is 54 centimetres. Just going to measure the hat block. And it's 56 centimetres. So I know that I'm going to have to shave off two centimetres in total, maybe a centimetre off each side of the block to get it close to my head shape. Now just looking at the half block, you can see it's actually oval in shape. You'll also notice that the back of the half block has more of a curve, the back of your head, and the front of the half block is almost completely straight, like the front of your forehead. 
So we're going to have to shape our hat blocks like that. So it's always a good idea to first mark the front and the back of your hat block so you know which way you're working when you start working on it. You can see here I've started to roughly colour in the parts I'm going to cut away, creating an oval shape. I continually pick up my tape measure and try and measure as best I can those areas so I'm not making it too small. I've decided to put it on the top and the bottom so that when I'm cutting I've got guides on both ends to help me. Now comes the time when we're going to carve our hat block. You don't need to wear your dust mask at this stage because cutting doesn't actually create dust. It's only the sanding that does. This table is fairly slippery so it might be a good idea to put down a towel or a non-slip mat during this process. And I'm going to put down a non-slip mat. But as I said, a towel will work just as well. And when you do a cut, you always just cut it in and then cut off each consecutive corner. And that way you'll be able to shape it with a minimum amount of error. To begin with, I'm going to shape my hat block by cutting off both the sides. I'll be continually re-measuring it the frequent intervals to make sure that I'm not cutting off too much. And after I have the sides cut away and it turns into an oval, I'll then start working on shaping the crown. Make sure that once you've completed your sanding that any surface that you've been working on you wipe down with a damp cloth. 
you don't want to be inhaling any of the styrofoam dust. Oh Mia! Okay, so now we're going to mix up our wood filler and you need your little bowl for that and a brush and uh, some water. A little bit of water for the bowl, a little bit for me. It's clear fluid. Are we sure that this is actually water and not something else? Hmm. <laughs> okay, just follow the instructions on this. But you want to mix up the wood filler until it's a consistency of about yogurt. Pretty simple. Try and stir it so there are no lumps and that all of the actual um, powdery substance is dissolved. That's probably a little bit thin. A bit more in. That aside. And once this is well and truly mixed, we're just going to actually paint the whole surface of our hat block. You can see here on this one I've actually left the bottom raw and that's probably not a bad thing. We're using this to fill in all the little tiny crevices and cracks that have been created in the star of foam by our cutting and sanding. And we're just going to apply two coats of this. Just painting it on. And between each coat we'll allow it to dry and we'll sand it. Now apply one coat of wood filler solution. I'm going to let that dry. I'll then sand this and apply another second coat. Okay, I've now applied two layers of wood filler. I've allowed it to dry between each coat and I've sanded between each coat. So what you need to do is to just wipe your hat block clean of dust and uh, wipe the table to prepare to place the last layer finishing coat of varnish on your hat block. Depending on which type of uh, product you've bought, the drying time between each layer will vary. This particular one says it's about an hour and an hour and a half and so I was able to apply these two layers of wood filler within a three hour period and, uh, and now it's pretty dry ready for the last coat. Just bear in mind for every layer of uh, wood filler that you put on or any layer of anything that you put on you will actually increase the circumference of your hat block. So if you apply several layers, uh, three or four layers because you're going for that perfect even finish you'll have actually increased your hat block size. So it might be necessary to actually make your hat block that tiny little bit smaller before you put your wood filler on. Okay, so what we need to now do is follow the instructions of our varnish and apply a coat of varnish to finish off our hat block. And what's good about the varnish is that it too will make its way into those little crevices and any holes that remain in the wood filler and try and brush it off as best you can to create a beautiful even finish to your hat block. And that's pretty much it. That's how you make a hat block. The cost of the hat block has been less than $50 and you've got enough product left over to enable you to go on and make several other hat blocks in different styles and shapes with very little additional cost. So thank you for watching my video and I hope this has been instructive and helpful and I hope you'll join me for one of my hat making workshops in the future. So bye for now.